Mabinogi, a game that I played on and off since the open beta, and I'm sure it's a game that many of you have held near and dear to your heart over the years that have gone by. Now there's tons of things you can do within Mabinogi, and I've spent countless hours playing over the course of a decade. Before I stopped playing, I was only a total level of a thousand. Now returning back to the game, there's a lot of things I want to accomplish, like reaching a high level, getting stronger, reaching end game content. Now with that in mind, the series is intended to document my journey through the world and the memories that I make along the way. This is my third week in Mabinogi. Coming back to the game, I had a bunch of gear left over on my pets. Now going through it, none of it kind of matched the aesthetic that I wanted to go for. Especially with this new journey that I was going on in Mabinogi, I kind of had a look in mind that I wanted to pull off, so I decided to go on a hunt for some new armor and a new aesthetic. So if you're a new player watching this, you're probably thinking, where is the best place to get some dope looking armor? How can I look like a character off a of berserk? I want some sick armor, I want a cape, I want a sword, I want to look badass. Now you're probably going to guess your local blacksmith, but let me tell you something Johnny boy, you are very wrong. There's actually something in the game called an auction house that can be pulled up from anywhere at any time and it allows you to sell and trade with players on the fly. So after scouring the wiki, I actually found an armor set that I wanted and kind of fit the vibe that I was going for. The only downside is it didn't have a flowing cape like I wanted or even a hood, which I would have liked, but overall, this is kind of the look that I was going for, and I think it came out pretty good. Coming back to the game, one of my main goals was to complete all the story quests and to catch up to where I should be. When I first came back, I was on Generation 9, I do believe, and I had to work my way up from there. And in three weeks, I managed to get caught up in the sense of being relatively close to where the game's at now, which is Generation 25. But boy, oh boy, I was not ready for this at all because some of the bosses absolutely kicked my ass. So there still is a skill gap, and that's something that I want to work on closing in the future and just to get stronger. Because typically the generational story quests aren't anything too hard compared to the extra content that comes along with it, but completing them does give you some good benefits like skills, transformations, all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely worth doing if you're a new player. Now I know I mentioned that my goal was to proceed with the generations, but somebody in my chat mentioned, since you need money, why don't you get your passive income rolling? And I was like, how do you do that? And they mentioned Finny Gem. So with that, that's going to kick off the training arc of my week three. Now, to get this passive income rolling, there's a lot that needs to be done. I needed to get some skills to a high enough rank to craft the materials needed to make blossoming cages. And what we were going to do after we get those materials is set it up on all of my alt characters so that way the gems can actually get made while I'm not playing them so I can log in, sell them, and have money rolling in. So right away the first thing I needed was to get some iron bars and so with that I needed some iron ore so we headed down into the mines of Bangor to get some iron ore. Right away, we ran into an issue once we had the ores. The last time I tried to craft something was back in generation 2 or 3. Yeah, that was quite some time ago. So luckily I had my chat here to help me and they walked me through the process. And among that, they told me, instead of mining, why don't you just go shifting for metal? You can make ore out of them and it's so much easier. I was like, all right, bet, how do I do it? So we started to do that, and while I was gossiping to my chat about soul streamers, one actually decided to drop in. A little suspicious if you ask me, but, you know, timing in life can be funny. So like an absolute OG that he was, he ended up taking me under his wing for a couple of hours and this begins the true training arc of week 3. 
and I'm telling you this took hours it, it took hours we we spent like a solid six hours working on my life skills it was just awesome because the entire time he's giving me buffs he gave me access to his homestead which was phenomenal it was nutty it had everything that you could ask for if you want access to it go over to his youtube channel the link will be in the description and be like hey can i have access to your homestead it's open to the public so it's a great resource but with that we worked on my blacksmithing mostly my blacksmithing and collecting all the stuff that was required to get the blossoming cages made now if you're new to this game when it comes to ranking up life skills especially something like crafting or blacksmithing to be specific sometimes you're gonna have to craft things that you don't want to and that requires materials that you may not have and that you may have to grind out or shell out money for now firelight was awesome he gave me everything that i needed to get to the rank that i needed to be and it just streamlined this process so much and again i couldn't be more grateful so huge shout out to him make sure you go check out his youtube channel and after hours and hours and hours and hours of grinding i was able to make three cages on my main character's homestead and with that that concludes the training arc now to cap off the end of my week i actually ended up meeting somebody on my stream who was like hey why the hell are you using mana knuckles? And that actually kicked off a series of interesting events that honestly were very fun and interesting and extremely helpful. And like I mentioned, this week has been all about training and yet again, this follows that same suit. So from there, it ended up leading to them crafting me some very good gear and also asking me to tag along with them on a dungeon run just to see how I fare. And boy oh boy, the skill gap has become even more evident. So they ended up asking me, hey, show me your stats. Upon inspection, apparently I didn't pass the test. So they kind of took me under their wing and they're like, let's train some skills. You need some certain techniques. It's going to make you a lot tankier and able to take more hits. So with that, we began grinding out some skills. And first up was winemaking. And if you're like, hero, why don't you sound excited for winemaking? Well, let me tell you, winemaking is boring and pointless because you can't even drink the goddamn wine. We spent hours picking goddamn grapes off a goddamn tree. For what? Just to, to, to get some skill points? Yes. Yes, that is why, and that's the primary reason. But it doesn't mean I still didn't hate it. It was extremely boring and horrible. So outside of winemaking, we did level up some other skills because I needed to get my magic protection up. This person has become my senpai, and I just want to say a huge shout out to you. I appreciate it. But other than that, that kind of wraps up my week three, and I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching and supporting the channel and all the Mabinogi content, and I guess I'll see you guys for week four. Uh, make sure to subscribe because we're posting tons of Mabinogi content, and I'm enjoying these weekly updates and this is more the vibe i wanted to go for and i hope you guys have a great week